Welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. Uh, my name is uh, Michael Penn. I'm the Vice President, and I'll be your uh, host for today. Uh, this is a, uh, a press conference which I personally am very interested in. Uh, I think that the, uh, there are many aspects of the Okinawa story which need to be told, and uh, sometimes they're not told as much as they should be, especially in the foreign media. And we have two guests that uh, have expert opinions which they would like to share with us. Uh, sitting right next to me is uh, Dr. Akira Kamayama, and he is the Director General of the Nature Conservation Society of Japan. And uh, next to him is his colleague, Dr. Mariko Abe, and she is the Chief of the Conservation Unit of the same organization, the Nature Conservation Society of Japan. And they are here to uh, present a letter and to present uh, a number of arguments related to the Dugong which is, uh, as many of us know, a, uh, a very rare mammal, uh, which uh, has uh, feeding grounds near the uh, Aura Bay, uh, which uh, is now subject to a uh, military base being constructed there. Uh, I'm not going to take any more of your time. I will leave it to them to present their case. Uh, but before I do so, uh, if you have a Keitai Denwa, uh, please uh, put it on manner mode. And uh, let's go ahead and move forward. The order of the speaking will be uh, Dr. Abe first, and then uh, Dr. Kamiyama will uh, read a letter, and then uh, Dr. Abe will again uh, finish up for us. And then after that, we'll have the Q&A. So uh, Dr. Abe, please. Yes. OK. Um, Nature Conservation Society of Japan is an environmental conservation group in Japan. We have been conducting various marine researches in Henoko Oura Bay area, Okinawa, since 2002. I'd like to explain um, the name of the place. Um, the outer area is our outer reef area is called uh, Henoko, and inner area is called Oura, and this is the plant-based uh, construction area. And there are mangrove tidal flat. Massive varieties areas, muddy areas, sandy areas, seagrass beds, and uh, we have dugongs here. Coral communities, seagrass beds, mangrove, tidal flood, muddy areas, sandy areas are building one big set, and all parts are necessary to support here. Then this ecosystem is biodiversity rich however, very fragile. And today, uh, we are going to focus on cigarette beds among them, and also would like to uh, give, uh, give the brief explanation of what dugong is. Um, cigarette bed, we have the largest size of cigarette bed around Okinawa Island remaining, and um, sea turtles and dugong feed on. Uh, dugong are uh, Endangered species in the red data list of the uh, Japanese Ministry of Environmental and also designated as a Japanese natural monument. Okinawa Island is the northern limit of Dugon's habitat, and three individuals are confirmed in Okinawa. Uh, research is done by Okinawa Defense Bureau, but a Dugon expert. Dr. Kasuya said um, the population estimate is more than four, less than 10. And um, please um, look at your handout 2E. The Okinawa Defense Bureau conducted its environmental impact assessment for the construction and operation of the Futenma replacement facility in this area. The Bureau's EIA predicts that Considering the range of movement of the dugongs and utilization of seagrass beds as feeding grounds by the dugongs, the probability that the dugong will move to feed on the seagrass beds along the Henoko Bay area is small. There were no report of dugong usage from 2005 through 2008. However, in 2009, the ODB's own survey reports indicates that the Jigong had begun to use this area again. Since then, 
The usage has gradually increased of the area, and this year, from May through early July, we conducted surveys on dugong feeding trails. We found, uh, we recorded more than 150 feeding trails in the area. The area we found is right here. Um, Shuab, um, it's just uh, besides Camp Shuab, and this area falls in the temporarily restricted water area now, and people are not go allowed to go in. The temporarily restricted water areas were established in mid-July this year by both Japan, Japanese and U.S. governments in order to proceed with the construction of the Futema replacement facility to develop and implement effective measures for the future conservation of Jugon, It is particularly important to know how frequently the Jugon come to the plant construction site and what type of seagrass they prefer to feed upon. Therefore, we requested U.S. force in Japan for permission to enter and conduct research in the temporarily restricted water areas. For, so, and our chairman of the board of director, Akira Kameyama, stated the process and our wish in a letter to Ms. Caroline Kennedy, the ambassador of the United States of America. We sent it to her on this Tuesday. She must have received it by now. Dr. Kamem is going to share the content with you. Now, uh, <coughs> I'll read the letter to the ambassador of the United States of America. Dear Ambassador Kennedy, to begin with, uh, I'd like to express my deepest appreciation and highest respect for your significant contribution to enhancing the strong bond between our two nations. Today, I'm writing on behalf of the Nature Conservation Society of Japan and environmental conservation organization in Japan who has been conducting serious of marine surveys in Henoko and Oura Bay for the 20 years, uh, 12 years, no, sorry. I'd like to ask you to pay special attention to the current st status of the serious environmental situation of the coast of Henoko area in Okinawa. Uh, this is where the Okinawa Defense Bureau has recently started drilling survey for the construction of the U.S. Marine Corps Futema replacement facilities. Our organization and Team Zen, Zan of the Association to Protect Northernmost Dugon invited two prominent international experts on Dugon and seagrass. Dr. Ellen Hines of San Francisco State University and Dr. Lemner Aragones of the University of the Philippines to conduct a comprehensive monitoring survey on Dugon feeding trails in the area of Henoko and Oura Bay. Originally, our survey with Dr. Heinz and Dr. Aragon was planned on August 22nd and 23rd, 2014. Our plan to conduct a comprehensive survey was triggered by the result of our recent fact-finding scientific surveys regarding the habitual behavior of the endangered dugong population 
in this area. From last May until mid-July, we have found and have recorded more than 150 Dugon feeding trails at area of the Camp Schwab in the area of Henoko and Ola Bay. This survey records are obvious scientific evidence that strongly calls for further comprehensive and long-term survey in the area. However, these areas now fall within the tem temporarily restricted waters recently established by the Japanese government in mid-July. In order for us to conduct a comprehensive monitoring survey in the temporarily restricted water areas, thus we submitted to application letter for official permission of the survey to Lieutenant General John Whistler, Commanding General, General 3 Marine Exped Expeditionary Force and the U.S. Military Okinawa Area Coordinator of the United States Forces in Japan, USFJ, on July 28th. I attach with this letter a copy of this application for your further reference. During this submission process, we faced difficulties in reaching Lieutenant General Whistler directly. This was due to the fact that we could not receive appropriate contact info information for him from the USFJ. During this process, we learned that Major General Charles Hudson, Commanding General Marine Corps Installation Pacific, is in charge of this issue. According, we resent, we resent our application letter for official permission to him. Our request for con Conducting scientific survey, which is based on pure scientific evidence mentioned above, was however declined by Colonel Christopher B. Snyder, Deputy Command Commander, Marine Corps Installation Pacific, in his letter sent to us dated on August 15th. We, the Nature Conservation Society of Japan, would like to express our deepest regret to you for this decision made by the U USFJ. The area of Henoko and Ola Bay is a rich natural environment. The International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, has adopted recommendation three times, calling for the conservation of the dugong inhabiting the area. The population of the dugong in Okinawa is especially valuable since it is the northernmost population of the Dugon species in the world. We would like to reconsider the importance of scientific research on the Dugon in this area. If the current situation where drilling surveys are carried out with no independent scientific surveys on the Dugon, allowed, 
important scientific knowledge and truth about the behavior of the dugong would be lost forever. It is imperative that sound and bias surveys are conducted. As good allies and partners for peace and nature, the United States and Japan have been cooperating for the conservation of natural environment and endangered species for a long time. This has been done in collaboration with the United Nations and the international scientific communities. We believe this particular decision made by the USFJ is completely contrary to the spirit of our two allies. We would not cons consent this decision and ask your special attention to and reconsideration on this profound problem. Most sincerely. Thank you. Okay, um, please look at your handout 3E and 4E now, please. Well, um, there are several more pro I would like to make a supplementary explanation. Uh, we got a um, reply from the USFJ, but there are several more problems in the letter. It stated that the temporarily restricted water areas constitute an active Japan construction site, and the current construction activity takes place. However, the current activity undertaken by ODV is pre-construction surveys. Therefore, we believe it is illogical for the USFJ to deny to conduct scientific research. The letter also said, Japan studied the potential impacts of the current construction activity under Japanese environmental impact assessment law. However, many environmental NGOs, scientists, pointed out that EIA has, this EIA has no regard for science and democracy. Democratic should be, um, it should re reflect the voices of the Okinawa people who would be affected by this project. A recent report released by the US Congress Research Service also refers to such environmental concerns. Also, the letter said, the ODB confirmed that the proposed survey areas are located in ODB work areas on the water, where construction and military watercraft are operating, and entrance safety cannot be ensured. If the current situation of the area is not safe enough for a scientific survey to be conducted, one has to conclude that the mitigation and conservation measures proposed in EIA for the endangered dugong are not appropriate at all. The population of the dugong in Okinawa is especially valuable since it is the northernmost population of the dugong species of the world. And I uh, just quickly go through um, handout number six. The, we did we did a dugong feeding trail survey on August 22nd, and the survey areas were. Um, as we couldn't enter the uh, temporarily restricted water areas, we did survey on two sites. Uh, one is closed off section of Oura Bay and Sedake. And please go to the page two of uh, the two. If you could look at table one, uh, it's at, it uh, shows you the number of feeding trails we found. And for closed off section of Aura Bay, for June and July, we recorded 16 feeding trails, but uh, on August 22nd, um, we have 
we recorded no dugong feeding trails. Also, it is the same for Seidake. We couldn't find any dugong feeding trails. So what we can conclude is there is a possibility that dugong stopped using part of their feeding grounds in Aura Bay. Noise and heavy traffic of vessels along with pre-construction survey of RDB might have affected on dugong's behavior. The survey of Shuap side of Aura Bay in temporarily restricted water area is necessary and based on scientific data, appropriate environmental protection measures should be taken. Also, um, could you have a, a look at the hand, your handout number five, this thick one? i just go through uh, quickly. Number one is about uh, dugong feeding trails, which I explained now. And number two is uh, Japan's first stalactic Tights with coral gravel have been discovered. A cave on Nagashima, an island offshore from Henoko, where local people go for recreation, has been found to be a limestone cave of very great scientific value. This is the first report in Japan. Also, number three. Page two, and um, there are continuing discovery of new species and the first recorded findings of certain species in Japan. And I would like to conclude um, the um, undertaking of the FRF plans is contingent upon the appropriateness and validity of the prediction made in the Okinawa Defense Bureau's EIA. When the predictions of the EIA greatly differ from the current and actual situations, it is required that further scientific research should be conducted. The Okinawa dugong is the northernmost dugong of all dugong species in the world. It is of global importance to know the status and behavior of the Okinawa dugong. So we hope that Ambassador Kennedy will actually reply to our letter. We hope that she will show in her reply the same kind of consideration and care she shows regarding environmental issues in the United States. Okay, well, now we will move into the question and answer period. Uh, we are setting up the microphone over here. Uh, when I call on you, uh, please give your name and affiliation and then uh, ask your question. Uh, so I'm looking for hands from now. Uh, Dennis. Hi, Dennis Normile of Science Magazine. Uh, I have, can I get away with three questions? You can. <laughs> uh, first of all, I would like to confirm that there are only between four and 10 dugongs left. This is in all of Okinawa Prefecture. Is, is that a viable population? Well, um, it's all of Okinawa. We used to have a lot, but you used to have many individuals, but uh, only between four to 10 are living. That's all for Okinawa Prefecture, or I should say Japan. With such a small number of individuals, is there any hope of reviving the population, or is this headed for extinction? Well, um, yes, uh, it, it is very hard hard to survive uh, for Okinawa Jigong for survive. Right. And is your ultimate objective here to try to get the decision on building the base reversed? Or would you simply like to see uh, some other environmental measures taken to try to preserve the remaining dugong and other species? 
And if so, what are those other environmental measures? Could you repeat your last question again? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is your basic objective mm -hmm. to try to prevent the construction of the Fatima replacement facility? Or do you hope to get uh, al alternative environmental measures adopted to try to preserve the remaining dugong? Well, uh, basically, uh, we are hoping land reclamation to stop. I mean, uh, we, we are not happy uh, in general that uh, all coral reefs are reclaimed. But of all, all coral reefs, Henoko is especially biodiversity unique areas. Not only dugons, there are lots of um, species and ecosystems. Ge geology should be conserved. Could that be done by modifying the base construction plan, or do you think it would have to be stopped entirely? Well, it should be stopped entirely, we think, as um, whatever the shape or size is would be converted, it is going to affect the uh, whole area whole environment of Henoko and Oro Bay. Teddy. Um, Teddy Jimba, I'm going to ask questions in English first and then I'll ask in Japanese. Um, and you have to excuse, excuse, excuse me for my um, uh, ignorance for not following this issue closely enough, but very basic questions. Uh, my understanding was that the environmental assessment was conducted on this area, on this plan, project. And uh, if uh, dugong is endangered species under the Japanese uh, law, how did, they, did it pass the, uh, uh, you know, environmental uh, assessment? That's my first question. Second question is, I also understand that the U.S. Uh, federal court in San Francisco uh, had made a decision uh, not to uh, build the base here un until DOD, the Defense Department, come up with a plan to protect the uh, environment, the cultural, cultural environment uh, of this area. Um, and uh, what happened to that? To that court requirement for the U.S. government, um, and how come now construction is about to begin any, any, any time, uh, given that assessment was needed, and at the same time, court decision was made in, I believe it was 2008. Yeah. Ano, futatsu desu, ano, assessment de kankyo assessu ga okonare te ると omoimasu ga, eh, konkai, ano, dugo nitsuite atarashii jouhou ga, ano, データわけですよね。で、それ、それに関して、え、ま、その以前に出された環境アセスはま、通ったということで、なんか午前4時に持ち込まれ、あの、検証に持ち込まれたっていうのニュースになってますが、今回その受言が見つかったということで、え、その新
uh, it is difficult to um, ask to do the whole EIA process once again because uh, they consider this is minor change. In fact, now uh, Japanese government, ODB, uh, set up so-called Environmental Monitoring Committee to oversee the environmental impact of the base construction. And they are in charge of uh, taking care of the um, change, the scientific, well, um, scientific, scientific any change. This committee is, however, this committee is made of experts and scientists but in our view, the way committee is being run is not transparent. The committee has had two meetings so far. The meetings were closed to the public and only a summary of the minutes of the first meeting is available to the public on the internet. So we don't know the in detail what were discussed in these meetings, but the second meeting was held in June after we found Jugon's feeding trails. So they should have had discussions on this. But um, the, we can't get a um, summary of minutes. We don't know what were discussed. That's what's happening to um, EIA. And for a Jugon lawsuit, as um, we are not plaintiffs nor attorneys, so uh, we don't have an, uh, no direct relationship. However, um, what we know is um, and the, since two, year 2008, uh, things have changed again recently. Now, um, plaintiffs submitted supplemental complaint to the court. And they are waiting for United States and Department of Department of Defense's reply now. And I heard that um, uh, probably the answer will come within this month. Isabel Reynolds from Bloomberg, thanks for your presentation. I'm sorry, I came a bit late, so I, I may have missed something. But um, about this uh, press release about the, uh, the Dugong Trails, this, um, the survey that found uh, 150 feeding trails, that was conducted this year? Um, fr from from, from when? May, May to July. May to July. Yep. And, um, I'm a little confused. If there are only four to ten dugongs, how are they making so many trails? Is, is, that, is that normal? Well, dugong have to eat a lot because they are herbivore, and they have to uh, support their big body by just uh, eating seagrass. So uh, I don't know how many trails would they make a day, but they just need a lot. Okay. Um, and also, I wanted to ask, um, I believe Caroline Kennedy said in a recent media interview uh, that the Fatema replacement facility was the only option. Um, given that she's just said that recently, how uh, optimistic are you that she'll, she'll listen to your uh, request? Oh, well, that's a difficult question. Um, well, as uh, as she is in a position to uh, to connect two countries, Japan, U.S., so uh, we decided to let her know the what happened between USFJ and us. That the first reason, and second reason is she is so interested in citizens, dolphins. So dolphins are uh, similar to dugong. So if her affection could go to dugong, uh, I think she might be able to understand. We hope. OK, uh, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, I believe that the. Uh, Okinawa prefectural government uh, was asked to, uh, shall we say, 
um, authorize the environmental uh, damage that would be cr uh, created by the space. And uh, they said uh, it was within a manageable amount of damage that it, the, the construction could go forward. Uh, my question for you is, what's your feeling about the Okinawa prefectural government's uh, authorization of this and, and their environmental study? Um, and, and my question more specifically is, do you feel that they broke the law in, in the way that they short-circuited this, uh, or potentially short-circuited this study? Or do you feel that they obeyed the law, but they just did it in a not thorough way? Well, I think uh, Okinawa Prefecture as following a law, but a law, I think all laws have some loopholes to go through. It is very, very strange that uh, in year 2012, uh, Okinawa Prefectural Governor himself said um, this EIA cannot, uh, by uh, environmental protection measures of this EIA cannot protect, cannot protect our Henoko environment. It is impossible what he said. But just in two years later, he he made decision conclude um, completely opposite to what he said before. So it is very strange we think, and also for the um, environmental. Environmental Monitoring Committee, what I, which I explained, is um, um, he, they, uh, Okinawa government made a, a special, special official promise when they um, gave approval for land reclamation that and they are going to care about environmental protection. And one of the promise made is they are going to set, they are going to watch what uh, environmental monitoring committee do. But now Okinawa prefectures don't get any information of environmental monitoring committee, so they don't know what environmental committee are talking. So I think they are very irresponsible. More questions? OK, while we're waiting, um, the uh, dugong obviously is the environmental issue which uh, captures the most attention. It's, uh, you know, if you go to uh, the beach there in Hinoko, the dugong pictures are, are the ones we see the most of. But after the dugong, what do you rank as the most important uh, environmental aspects of this area that need to be protected? That's a good question, but um, it is hard to choose. However, mm, I hope if you could read through the um, number three of this report, uh, but um, apart from new species and um, nearly, nearly recorded species, we have a big blue coral community in Aura Bay. This is the uh, first discovery and we don't, and there are no records so far for Heliopora Curia. Sorry, again, I may be asking you to repeat yourself. Could you tell me how many dugong do we think there are in the world? And also, secondly, uh, if this project does go ahead and the land is reclaimed and the base built, um, what do you predict will happen to the dugongs? Could they find another feeding area or would it necessarily mean that they die out? Okay. Um, 
It is very difficult to count the number of dugongs, so uh, even dugong specialists don't know how many uh, individuals are in the world. What I heard uh, yesterday is um, there are eight, 85,000 dugongs in Australia, but uh, they don't know the uh, world's total, and also even eight, 85,000 is... Uh, did not not recent data, so this is old one. And for the uh, Okinawa dugong, the number is really low. But uh, we think one of the thing we can try we can try as uh, population recovery. We can learn from success stories of population recovery of other endangered species in other parts of the world. I think. For example, in 1990, fewer than 50 green sea turtles were documented nesting at Florida East Coast. And this uh, 20 mile stretch of beach hosted more than 10,000 green sea turtle nests in last year. So making this one of the greatest conservation success stories of our own time. And also another uh, ex uh, example is sea otter. Once numbered in the thousand before the far trade and other factors reduced their numbers to about 50 in 1914. But listed under the Endangered Species Act in 1977, this remarkable species rebounded to approximately 2,800 individuals between 2005 and 2002. So this is uh, what we can try. And also, um, this is regard to the first question by Dennis. Um, but do you want uh, animal is as animal is very important for the uh, ecosystem and biodiversity. However, also uh, Dugong has another aspect. The Dugong has been uh, playing an important role in Okinawa culture. In Okinawa, the Dugong has been considered as the symbol of abundance and happiness. The Dugong has also been considered as a messenger of the sea god who warned people to avoid tsunami. So um, rituals proposed portraying the Jugong as a messenger of the sea god are still performed in some communities. So um, I think there are positive aspects in Jugong population in Okinawa if uh, this project stops. Yeah, you have a second question, right? Mm -hmm. um, you want to repeat your second question? Sorry, I just wanted to confirm what you would, what you think will happen if the project goes ahead to the dugongs. Will they necessarily die out, or could they find somewhere else to feed? Well, um, as as um, uh, well, um, it it is it is in um. <laughs> okay, um, Henoko sea grass bed is the uh, largest largest one remaining around Okinawa Island. And other than that, we don't have so so many amount of uh, sea grass found in around Okinawa Island. So it is very very hard for uh, dugong to survive if this project go on and and um, there are other problems that uh, if this project goes on um, it is um, this project includes sea sand extraction um, ODB EIS data that Jugon use Kayo area 
Uh, this is uh, Cape Henoko, and this is where seagrass beds are. And this is Kayo, and this is very small seagrass beds are. And um, this seagrass bed is used by dugong most frequently. And ODBEA said that uh, Kayo, if Kayo would be okay, so dugong would be okay. That's their, pro their prediction. However, they are going to take sea sand from off the coast of Kayo. So, um, and also there is another problem that um, landfill materials for land reclamation is going to be delivered from here to Henoko and here to Henoko by vessels. However, Jugon's migration route is also the same. Uh, the west coast to east coast, they move like this. So, proceeding this project means um, there, there is a possible collisions, collisions between Dugong and construction ships carrying sea sand and rocks. And also, um, taking sea, sea sand from off Kayo means um, it is going to give influence on Kayo seagrass bed area too. So Dugong is going to lose both Henoko and Kayo seagrass beds. So OGB's EIA said there is a low possibility that Dugong will continue using the seagrass meadows at Henoko and they are using the Kayo seagrass meadow. So then at least the conservation of the Kayo seagrass meadow should be guaranteed, we think, but then um, this this is not ha what happened. If this project goes on, uh, Dugons is going to lose both Henoko and Kayo. So there is a very, very little chance would be left if this project goes on. Teddy. Uh, sorry, I don't know if I said my name uh, last time. Teddy Jimbo, the video news. Um, um, at one point, actually, there was a plan to build a new runway inside the um, Camp Schwab uh, inland. So uh, my question is, as far as Dugon is concerned, uh, if there's no land uh, rec uh, reclamation and if uh, runways to be built in inland, such as uh, inside the Camp Schwab, uh, it will not affect mm -hmm the Dugong or will still affect uh, the Dugong because airplanes will be landing and taking off very close to where Dugong is. So that's my question. Well, um, if there is no, no land reclamation of ocean occur, I think the plan is better. I mean, with regard to uh, Dugons and surrounding environment. But uh, we, there will still be a soil runoff from the construction. So it's not, um, we are not saying 100 happy with the, uh, the plan what you said now, but um, if they can do project only online, that would be better. Okay, we have time for maybe two more questions. Dennis? Two, uh, a few things, just to confirm. The Green Sea Turtle uh, revival was, was based where? Florida, um, Archicar National Wildlife Sang Refuge. I'm sorry, could you say that once again? Uh, it, it, uh, spelled A-R-C-H-I-E-C-A-R-R, -R, National Wildlife Refuge. Okay. And Florida's East Coast. All right. And um, also, when you talked about the remaining numbers of Dugong, mm. I, I think you had a reference to a scientific paper um, uh, on your slide. The slide, okay. Uh, this, this one? Uh, no, when you talked about how many dugongs were left. Okay. The, you, you're you're uh, saying this one? Yeah. 
Toshio Kasia is Dugong expert. Do you know what institution he's at? Well, uh, he's already retired. Uh, I can't remember. Um, I can't remember, but I can check his uh, affiliation. Okay. And the bay, uh, mm. the official name of the bay is Aura Bay. Mm. And Hanoko refers to uh, the, the, Hanoko, the land. Hanoko refers to refers to and it's like a bay is uh aura bay and uh from here the uh reef slope is going to start develop so we call here Henoko. It is clear? Um uh, it, but it's not Henoko Bay. Well, we don't really say Henoko Bay. Sorry for complication. Actually, that neighborhood that, that's just next to the base is all called mm. Hinoko, yeah, too. Yeah. The on land neighborhood. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, here is called Hinoko. I was looking at maps, and I think there's a Cape Hinoko, right? Cape Hinoko, when you say it's Cape Hinoko, it's, it's here. <laughs> right. Okay. Sorry for confusion. <laughs> 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 All right, one more person can jump in. This is your last chance to find out about the Dugon and the at our press conference today. All right, well then I'll just turn it over for you. Do you have a final word that you'd like to give us? Uh, you know, uh, obviously, uh, this issue is going to be not only an, an environmental issue, but it's one of the key political issues uh, in the upcoming uh, gubernatorial election uh, scheduled for, I believe, uh, uh, November. Uh, and uh, so uh, how do you think this issue is going to impact uh, local politics in, in, o in Okinawa? Well, so um, Dugong and surrounding environment are important in both uh, scientifically and culturally. It is connected to people's life. So I hope the one who cares about the importance of this ocean is going to be elected as a new governor. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, that concludes our event today. And uh, I believe that they will stay a few moments to exchange cards uh, if you want to follow up with them later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.